quickly here. So then, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. There are three points in this verse, in these few verses, that I really want to highlight. The number one verse, or the number one point that I really want to highlight is the sin of wasted purpose. He says, when you walk as a fool, you waste what God has put in you. God has invested so much in us, saints, not just on the cross, but he's given us a wealth of gifts and a wealth of anointing and a wealth of strength and a wealth of power. But we yet sit and not operate under the anointing that God has given us. God says, it's a sin to waste what I put in you. The greatest sin beyond blaspheming sometimes and, and beyond doing unholy things is sitting on what God has given you. But how many know in 2019, I am going to maximize every bit of potential that God has put down inside of me? Okay. Tell somebody, maximize your potential. Maximize your anointing. God's given somebody a great anointing, a great anointing to preach, a great anointing to lay hands, a great anointing to cast out devils. It's time to operate under the maximized power of God. Everybody say a new dimension. With a new dimension comes a new anointing of fresh. You don't come up here just to pray for strength. I want to be a fresh anointed for the work of Jesus Christ. The sin of wasted purpose. Yeah. I was, uh, I was talking to Bishop. I was in First Baptist Church of Glenarden. Uh, Musa, and I told the Lord, and I told my wife. I said, we could do this. Yes, yes, amen. Amen. All right. We've got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. All right. We've got the anointing. We can have 10,000 members, or you don't see the vision, but I can see it. We can have 11,000. All right. But you've got to maximize. I don't know how this is going to go over, but I'm going to say it. Apostolics, if you don't maximize it, God will move to the Baptists, and he will maximize it in them. That wasn't going to go over well. But God said, if you won't do it, I'll use them. I'll get in the mouth of a donkey. I'll speak to a dove. I'll get in a leaf. I'll get in a child. If you won't get up, I'll get up in somebody else. Right. I don't have time to waste on your laziness and apathy. And your lackadaisical attitude. Get up and God and do what he's called to do. Sin a wasted purpose. Number two, what Paul is showing here in verse 16, redeeming the time, he's showing us the gift of the continuity of life. Life is a gift. Everybody take a breath in. Breathe it out. It's a gift. Yes, sir. That's a gift. Do it again. You can do it without an oxygen machine. You can do it without assistance. You can do it without passing out. That's a gift. Won't we just take about 10 seconds and praise God for the gift? of my limbs. Yes. Thank you for inhaling and exhaling. Thank you for thinking in my right mind. Thank you for being able to lift my right leg. Thank you for being able to lift my left leg. Thank you for being able to move my fingers. Thank you for being able to square my shoulders. Thank you for being able to see without glasses. Thank you for being able to see with glasses. Thank 
thank you for being able to inhale in my nose. Thank you for being able to exhale through my mouth. You better praise him. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There are those who wish they could be where you are right now. And if you just realize what God has given you just through the gift of life, you would praise him a lot better than what you're doing right now. So if you got two knees and you can pick them up like this, do it real quick for about 15 seconds. A new year is a gift. You don't deserve it. You don't earn it. God gives it freely. But he gives it to you with purpose. Continuity. Con continuation. The fact that you can cross over to another birth year. I was in the sonogram. He pushed in the sonogram appointment, and all I heard was. All right. All right. I said, My God, all right. The kid. The kid. He told Adam, I breathed into you. I breathe into you. Before you even knew what breath was, I breathe into you. My baby girl is, is breathing, but it's a gift God's given her. Benjamin is breathing, but it's a gift God's given him. You are breathing. It takes Lord saying, teach me. You, 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 you gotta enroll. 
You gotta enroll in God's class. And you gotta sit a while. And you gotta stay a while. Right. And you gotta ask God, God, teach me. Teach me your will. I don't wanna learn how to preach. I wanna learn your will, God. I don't wanna learn how to pray. I know how to pray. I wanna know your will. I don't wanna be frustrated. I don't wanna be confused. I don't wanna be tossed to and fro. I don't wanna be unstable in my spirit. But I gotta know your will. And wherever his will is, I gotta focus my mind. I gotta get in this word. I mean, deep in this word. Come on, saints. I mean, deep in this word. It's gotta be marinated in some, in some of you. That's why some of you are looking at me, because some of you are looking at me because you know this is right up my alley. I've been trying to figure out things, but I can't figure out things. I've been trying to figure out God, but I can't figure out God. I can't figure out what he wants in my life. I can't figure out what phase I'm in. And I'm getting older and I'm getting scared because I don't know if I'm operating right. But God says today is the day you heard my voice. And when you come to this altar, God is going to put on the light and he's going to reveal himself and what he wants out of you. Give God a praise for the revelation knowledge of his will concerning you. Concerning you. Concerning your home. Concerning your wife. Concerning your time. Concerning your ministry. is unstable. God says, I want to balance your spirit. I want to balance your spirit. Stop coming to church and then leaving confused. I want to balance your spirit. I want to balance your mind. Bring your mind in. Undivided attention. And I will show you the ways. I will show you the steps by which you should take. God said, I've heard your prayers. I heard you. This is a prophetic utterance. I'm not a prophet, but I am telling you. God said, I heard you. I'm going to reveal. But you're going to have to labor. You're going to have to get on your face. Uh -huh. You're going to have to humble your will down. Because sometimes we think our will is God's will. And we try to juxtapose the two. But God said, no, 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 no. Clear your thoughts. Clear your plans. Clear your approaches. Clear your perspectives. Clear how you saw it. And let me speak to you. Not another year of confusion and being distraught. And being unstable in spirit. Being unstable in mind. Lift your hands to God and tell hell and the devil not another. I'm walking with caution. I'm going to walk in his will. I'm going to walk in understanding. Because you got something to do. At 80, you got something to do. God didn't sit you up here just to wear white and call yourself a missionary. You got something to do. At 10, you got something to do. 
not just to go to Bible school and, and children's church. God needs you. God wants you. Some of you know, you know what God's called you to do. You know what he's called you to do. And you have not acted on it yet. You have not done it yet. Paul, if he was here, he would have called you a fool. He would have told you not to be unwise. Step out on God. Live right. Get your act together. And move under the anointing of God. And watch him bless you. Some of you have sick people around you. God says, why are you allowing them to be sick? Lay your hands on them and tell that sickness, get off of them. You've got the power to do it. This is not playtime. I believe in having a good time, but I believe more in walking in authority and walking in the knowledge of God Everybody stand to your feet.